Mr. Jay Herman, who is known for a writer and motivational speaker in the United States. So I'd like to ask you something about your life. So what kind of disabilities you had? Well, when I was five years old, I fell 12 feet to a platform and landed on a concrete slab on my head. And I suffered a brain injury. And as a result, I had several brain operations. And after that, I went into a coma for a month. When I came out of the coma, I was blind, paralyzed, and aphasia. I couldn't see, I couldn't move, and I couldn't speak. So I had to learn again how to, walk, how to move the left side of my body, how to speak, and how to see. And even though I got my vision back after about a year, I was blind for a year of my childhood, when it came back, I couldn't see very well. I couldn't see a very little bit, and within that visual field, uh, there were massive blind spots. And so I learned how to get around those blind spots, and then they'd move. So I learned to go this way, and then they'd move this way, and I'd fall down the stairs, or I'd fall off the curb, or something like this. So I had to learn very early how to constantly compensate for changing environments and changing deficits. So it made me very good at problem solving and resiliency. And that's really the core of my success strengths, is knowing how to identify problems and create strategies to mm -hmm. overcome or eliminate them. Yes. And then when I was, um, when I came out of the coma, mm -hmm. I suffered from ticks. Yes. Ticks are like kind of neurological ticks, like twitching or your face, your cheek or your yes. voice or something, clearing your throat, yes. tapping your foot. And I'd have a tick for a few days or a few weeks or a few months and then, then I'd drop it. I wouldn't even know I was doing it. And then I'd drop that one and I'd pick up another one. And this went on from the time I was five to the time I was 13. And then when I was 13, I saw myself do it in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And I said to my counselor at camp, do I twitch my face? And he said, of course you twitch your face. Because <laughs> everybody knew, except me. At the moment, you just realized that you had I was I was learning to shave. I was starting to get beard. So I was looking at my beard in the mirror and I saw my face twitch. And I thought, that's weird. And then a minute later I saw it again and I said to my counselor, do I do that? And he said, yes, you do that all the time. You're doing it right now. <laughs> so I went to the, camp, to the camp doctor and said, how do I stop myself from doing that? He said, you can't stop. When, you can't tell your face what to do, your brain what to do. Your brain tells you what to do. And it didn't make any sense to me. Why, why can't I control my face if my face is doing something. So he said, there's no way to stop it, so just forget it. And that was the summer that I was moving to California, so I didn't want the new people that I met to know I had a problem. So I spent the whole summer staring in the mirror for hours a day, watching my face twitch, watching it not twitch, making it twitch, making it not twitch, until I brought it under control. <clears throat> and at the end of the summer, I didn't twitch anymore. Wow. In six or seven weeks, I made my my whole neurological system so you under my control. And then the third thing, third part of my sort of learning how to compensate or achieve over setbacks was when I was in ninth grade. A year and a half later, I had a learning disability where I was a very had a very short attention span. I was a little hyper. Um, I wasn't a good reader. I couldn't do math very well, and I was in all special ed classes, no special ed, okay. small classes, two teachers, ten children, so I could teach her for every five children. Regular classes had one teacher, 40, 50 children. And I didn't like the way they were teaching me, they couldn't teach me fast enough. So I said to my guidance counselor, how do I not be learning disabled anymore? And she said, you can't be not learning disabled, you're learning disabled, you'll always be learning disabled. And I said, I don't understand. What does that mean? She said, well, once you're learning disabled, you're always learning disabled. You can't not be learning disabled. I said, do you know who you're talking to? Do you know what I've achieved in life? She said, yes, I know, but there's just nothing we can do or you can do. Just get used to it. And that just didn't make any sense to me. There's no reason why you can't conquer your own physical and mental cognitive deficits if you find a way to do it. Um, the, the trick is learning how to relate to what you have to do. So I spent the entire year of my freshman year, I started out in ninth grade on a, a seventh grade math uh, reading level and a fourth grade math level. 
and I spend my entire year dedicating myself to overcoming those obstacles. My goal is to be not be learning disabled anymore because there was something wrong, there's something in my way, and I couldn't get past it. And they didn't know how to teach me, so I knew that if I was going to get past it, I needed to find my own way to compensate and, and obliterate it. So I spent the entire year reading things that were way beyond my ability. Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, um, The Odyssey, The Bible, um, uh, Grapes of Wrath, things that were far beyond high school freshmen, let alone my reading level, even beyond where I was supposed to be. And I taught myself how to read better. I taught myself how to analyze better, how to think better, how to learn better. And at the end of my freshman year of high school, I was on a university reading level, and I was on an eighth grade math level. And that was inside of six or seven months. So those are sort of the, the ways that I've compensated. Unfortunately, I've spent my whole life disabled in one way or another, visually, perceptually, neurologically. So I'm always learning new ways of compensating for things that even I don't know are there yet.